Hey my friends, my name is Justine, I'm the Mermaid Seamstress and today is going to be a workshop. So I wasn't quite sure exactly what to call this video because it's not exactly a tail making tutorial, it's more just a progress vlog I guess, um, or Courtney's been calling them studio vlogs, uh, basically of a tail that I made for a good friend of mine, Claire the Mermaid Harpist. Um, over on Instagram, I made her a tail for her Luna to bring to England with her when she traveled abroad. Something that was a little bit more compact than her Finfo fabric tails and something that would look really great on her Luna. So I designed a tail for her made out of spandex um, and its name is Sea Nymph. And this tail was kind of an excuse for me to try a whole bunch of different techniques that I have never ever tried before. Um, and I could not be more prouder of this tail. Um, it was a really big project, but I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of what I did, the thoughts um, that went into this tail. And hopefully in some point in the future, once I kind of perfect some of the techniques that I used in this tail, I will have tutorials out so that you can make a tail similar to this. But for now, this is all I have. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. So the first start in starting to actually draw out the patterns and things is tracing out the monofin so that I can get a scale for the fluke pattern. Um, so I'm tracing out both the monofin and then I'm referencing my design off screen and drawing the completed pattern um, for both the fluke and the fins of the tail and then tracing over those in Sharpie um, so that I can actually see them and cut them out on both sides. So one thing about Sharpie on newsprint is that it bleeds through so that's how I make my patterns symmetrical. Once that is all traced out, I cut it out um, so that both sides were symmetrical. So on the same pattern, I'm going to cut out the middle bits um, and I'm actually cutting it out so that I can use this as the applique pattern. And what that means is this is the teal part um, that is actually going to sit on top of the purple base fabric that we see in the design and that we'll get to see more of uh, towards the actual sewing part of this piece. Next I'm making the pattern of the body piece and I'm referencing the measurements off screen. I mark the length measurements between the waist and hips, hips and knees, knees and ankles. Then I mark the circumference measurements on the fold to create uh, half of what will end up being half of the pattern, so the front or the back of the pattern. And I make it in quarters so that it's just a little bit easier to draw. And of course, once I've gotten all the body measurements traced out, I can mark um, where the monofin is going to go roughly, and then over that place our final fluke pattern um, so that I know where to cut the base part of the fluke and where that is going to attach to the actual uh, body of the tail itself. Once I'm finished tracing that, I can cut out um, the pattern for the body of the tail and we can separate out the fluke piece from the body and I usually write that I have to remember to add back um, about a half inch 
to an inch of seam allowance um, to that top edge so that I can attach the body of the tail to the final um, fluke piece. So that's what I'm doing and marking out here is the top portion of the pattern and then the second line, the solid line, is going to be my seam allowance. And of course, once we've finished with our paper pattern, we can start cutting out the fabric. So this is the scale fabric that we're using, um, and it is just a regular polyester spandex, that same one that I used on my bluefish tail um, that I like a whole lot, and I'm cutting it out using a rotary cutter. So I've actually run into a problem and that is the fabric was not long enough so I had to cut the tail in two pieces and this has happened to me before it happened on my blue tail I actually had to patch up the back um, here's the end of it nice and long and then we get to about the middle of the hip and I had to cut it in two. So let me show you what I decided to do about that. So here's what I've decided to do. I've decided to join the pieces over top of each other, just like that. And you can see it's pretty much impossible to notice. If you look really closely, you can see here. So there's a line of stitching down here and there's a line of stitching up here. Here's what the back looks like. Um, and so one piece is laying over the other like that and it's stitched on the top and the bottom and this is actually my mom and I played tug of war with this piece just to test its strength and it didn't come apart at all so I think we're going to go with this it still has its full range of stretch which is good um, and I think this is what I'm going to go with so I'm going to do this to the um, full piece of fabric and we'll see how it looks on the full piece of fabric but I think that this is promising because you can barely see that at all. So this is actually where I started to lose some footage of both cutting out the pieces of fabric. Um, so this is basically a piece of purple which is cut to the full size of the fluke and then a teal piece laid on top of it and um, this is just a sample of what I did. You can see kind of closely. So I've laid the teal piece down on top and I've just whip stitched um, everything into place. I did that with a zigzag stitch on my um, machine. And so it looks kind of like applique does. And I did that all the way around on both pieces. And now I'm getting ready to put the um, two sides of the fluke together with a French seam. So if you guys don't know what a French seam is, it basically means that you sew everything with an eighth, eighth of an inch, wrong sides together, um, so right side out and you sew along the outside of the fabric as thin as possible and then when you turn it inside out and stitch it the correct way which is right sides together while the garment is sewn out you fold you sew the seam over the raw edges so the raw edges are protected um and this was particularly important with these seams because they were so stiff from both the applique stitching and from the dyeing process that I needed to get a gradient on the, um, I used black to get a gradient from the dark black of the base fabric on the body and all the way down the teal parts. Okay. So here is the edge finished. It has a zigzag stitch. We'll allow it to stretch. Now what we're gonna do
body. Also stitched with a eighth inch zigzag stitch all the way around. to see in more detail how I attach the body and the fluke, um, you can check out my video on how to make a mermaid tail with two colors. The link will be in the description below and in the iCard above, but it is pretty simple. It's kind of like setting in a sleeve where basically you leave the body piece right side out and you turn the, the fluke piece inside out um, so that the right sides are touching and you basically pin on each side seam and then in the middle of each and slowly work in having between each pin um, so that they don't slip apart and then you triple stitch them together. final part of this is to triple stitch all the way around. And I'm going to do that using the handy dandy sleeve hem. I want to make sure the biggest part of this is making sure that the um, under fabric is not bunched up in there and making sure that you have a flat seam because it would really suck if you got a piece caught in there and then um, had to take this all out because triple stitches are a very very hard <clears throat> I was gonna use a word there that's not necessarily family friendly but uh, they are very very hard to undo so <laughs> I'm making sure to do this slowly and carefully and pause when I need to to readjust anything that seems to be a little bit askew. Also because you're sewing in a circle, um, you might have to stop again and readjust because things are gonna get twisted. So you wanna make sure that everything is smooth and flat and facing the direction you need it to face so that it doesn't again so that you don't have to <laughs> worry about ripping this out and sewing it again because that would be not so fun okay so here is what attaches the fluke to the main body of the tail uh, if you can see that if it'll focus um, I've just done a triple stitch all the way around and then I folded over the um, extra that I left and I finished the seam um, by triple stitching that down as well so it's double triple stitch so that seam is not going anywhere my next task if you notice this this seam hasn't been um, sewn yet because this is the inside of the tail so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin up uh, these seams, you can see that um, this is the problem that arises when you just use a zigzag stitch. You can see the stitching through that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up and I'm going to finish my French seam by going all the way down the rest of the tail. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but this is, whoops, focus please. Um, this is the seam and I've pinned it down and I'm going to do a triple stitch about a quarter inch away and that's going to finish off the French seam and I'm going to do that on both sides um, on the body and on the fluke all the way down and that will finish up the tail the only thing after that stage will be adding uh, the waistband and the fins so here you can see that we have finished the tail um, I didn't film adding in the waistband because I have other videos with that um, and then I have added pectoral fins and I have added heel fins and I'm actually so proud of this tail. I really 
hope that the mermaid harpist loves using this tale. Um, I'm so, so happy that I decided to make this project for her because it was, it really pushed the boundaries, um, I think, of my previous tale making experiences and I was just so thrilled with the end result. I plan to do an entire video um, on how I attached the fins and what options you have for fins because I felt like I learned a lot making this tail that I can then kind of write up protocols for and improve on in the future. So that is the finished tail. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I know Clarissa was super super proud of it. Um, if you want to see more of Sea Nymph's adventures, you should go and check out Claire, uh, the Mermaid Harpist, uh, on Instagram. She has a really cool channel, and I cannot sit, wait to see more adventures that she has in Sea Nymph. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye!